Good day everyone, Dr. Polaris here, and welcome to this new series focusing on the surprisingly numerous cryptids of the British Isles. We will begin this cryptozoological overview with perhaps the most famous of UK mystery animals outside of the Loch Ness Monster, the British Big Cats. These shadowy felines, supposedly representing a wide array of different species that are not native to the UK, have become a firmly established part of British folklore. Indeed, almost every county across the land has its own big cat stories, with evocative names such as the Beast of Bodmin, the Fen Tiger, and the Sheppy Panther. Sightings of these animals tend to describe large, either black or tawny-furred cats, often theorised to be cougars or panthers. However, there are a fair number of accounts that focus on rather different felids, including reports of cheetahs, jungle cats, servals, and even lions on occasion. For decades, reports of big cats have surfaced all over Britain, from Crystal Palace to Cornwall to Carlisle. There have been 155 big cat sightings reported to the UK police forces in the past three years alone. There are likely many more that are never reported, and local newspapers publish dozens of eyewitness reports every year. Where might these cats have come from? One theory suggests that they were released by their owners in the months leading up to the 1976 Dangerous Wild Animals Act. Exotic animals had once been sold in Harrods department store, and cheetahs could occasionally be seen being walked in Hyde Park. Given the choice of acquiring a costly license or relinquishing their pets to animal sanctuaries, at least some owners chose a third option, sending the cats out into the wild. In 2000, Leslie Maiden, a lion tamer known as One-Eyed Nick, told the Birmingham Post newspaper that he'd released a puma and a black leopard in Derbyshire some 25 years before. At first, I was a bit worried about how they would get on, he said, but I went up to the moors a few weeks later and saw the bones of sheep and pheasants, so I think they adapted pretty well. In his book Feral, George Monbiot argues that humans are programmed to notice things that might be big cats because of the threat they posed in prehistoric times. A preposterous fringe theory also suggests that the animals may be surviving Ice Age fauna. Sightings of unusual felids in Britain actually date back several centuries. The great radical writer William Cobbett recalled in his book Rural Rides how, as a boy in the 1760s, he had seen a cat as big as a middle-sized spaniel dog climb into a hollow elm tree in the grounds of the ruined Waverley Abbey near Farnham in Surrey. Later, in New Brunswick, he saw a North American lynx, and it seemed to him to be exactly the same cat as he had seen all those years earlier at Waverley. The more modern rash of sightings appear to have their origins in the 1950s, with news stories of the Surrey Puma and the Fen Tiger circulating wildly. In 1963, a significant and large-scale hunt for an alien big cat occurred in the area of Shooter's Hill, southeast London. The animal in question was dubbed by the press the Shooter's Hill Cheetah. On the 18th of July 1963, David Beck, driving through Shooter's Hill, saw a large animal lying by the side of the road. Assuming it to be an injured dog, he approached it, and then realised that it was in fact a large cat with a long, upward curling tail. It ran off into local woodland nearby. The same night, police officers were amazed to see a large golden animal jump over the bonnet of their patrol car. A check with zoos and circuses confirmed that no animals had escaped. Apparently, according to those alive at the time, the hunt for the supposed cheetah was a magnificent affair. It covered 850 acres and involved 126 policemen with 21 dogs, 30 soldiers, ambulance men and RSPCA officials. No sign of a big cat was found, except for some possible spore. These were huge, some 7 inches across, the size usually associated with a lion or a tiger, yet they showed claw marks, the characteristic not of lions but of a cheetah's paw print. The cheetah, however, was never caught, and the hunters eventually dispersed empty-handed. Reports of mystery big cats such as this began to spread across the country during the 1970s. 
with the famous Beast of Exmoor being one of the prime examples. Sightings were first reported in the 70s, although they became notorious in 1983, when a South Molton farmer claimed to have lost over a hundred sheep in the space of three months, all of them apparently killed by violent throat injuries. Descriptions of the coloration of the creature range from black to tan to dark grey. Eyewitness testimony has produced a number of different descriptions. Most accounts report the animal as being a large cat, either resembling a puma or a black panther. It is recorded as being somewhere between 4 and 8 feet from nose to tail, standing very low to the ground, and having the ability to leap over 6 foot tall fences with ease. There was even a report that the beast had been seen fishing with its paws into the river Baal near Simon's Bath, while some locals theorised that its lair might be in an old mine out on the moors. The Daily Express offered a reward for the capture or slaying of the beast, but this was never claimed, and farm animal deaths in the area have been sporadically blamed on the beast ever since. Soon after, in 1983, in response to increased reports of livestock deaths and sightings of the beast, the Ministry of Agriculture ordered the Royal Marines to send snipers into the Exmoor Hills. Although some Marines claimed to have seen the beast fleetingly, no shots were fired, partially because of the risk of the Marines' high-powered sniper rifle bullets passing straight through the creature's body and then causing injury to humans or livestock. During the search, the Marines' commanding officer was quoted as saying that their quarry behaved with high, almost human-like intelligence, and always moved with surrounding cover amongst hedges and woods. Ultimately, the marines were recalled from the field, after which the attacks on local sheep allegedly increased. By 1987, the creature was connected to over 200 farm animal deaths. More recent attacks were reported in 1995 and 2001. The ministry continued to study the reported sightings into the mid-1990s, before concluding that the beast was either a hoax or a myth, and that the alleged sightings had been mistaken identifications of creatures native to the Exmoor area. A very similar case occurred in Cornwall at roughly the same time, and concerned the Beast of Bodmin, which was also blamed for the mysterious deaths of livestock in the region. It has been claimed that animal trainer Mary Chipperfield released three cougars into the wild following the closure of her Plymouth Zoo in 1978 and that subsequent sightings of the animals gave rise to rumours of the beast. The Ministry of Agriculture continued on official investigations until 1995. The study found that there was no verifiable evidence of exotic felines on the loose in Britain, and that the mauled farm animals could be explained by more common indigenous species. The report stated that no verifiable evidence for the presence of a big cat was found, there is no significant threat to livestock from a big cat in Bodmin Moor. Less than a week after the government report, a boy was walking by the River Foley when he discovered a large cat skull. Measuring about 4 inches long and 7 inches wide, the skull was lacking its lower jaw, but possessed three sharp prominent canines that suggested it might have been a leopard. The story hit the national press at about the same time of the report, the skull was sent to the Natural History Museum in London for verification. They determined that it was a genuine skull from a young male leopard, but also found that the cat had not died in Britain, and that the skull had been imported as part of a leopard skin rug. The back of the skull was cleanly cut off in a way that is commonly used to mount the head on a rug. There was also an egg case inside the skull that had been lain by a tropical cockroach that could not possibly be found in Britain. There were also cut marks on the skull, indicating that the flesh had been scraped off with a knife, and the skull had only begun to decompose after a recent immersion in water. Despite the lack of any hard evidence for pantherine cats such as leopards living wild in the UK, there have been quite a few incidents of smaller, non-native cats having been captured alive. In 1980, a puma was captured in Invernessshire, Scotland. The capture followed several years of sightings in the area of a big cat matching the description of the one captured, which had led local farmer Ted Noble to erect a cage trap. The puma was subsequently put into the Highland Wildlife Park Zoo and given the name Felicity. When it died, it was stuffed and was placed in Inverness Museum. Zoo director Eddie Orbell concluded that the animal had been tamed and might not have been released for long, 
noting that it enjoyed being tickled. In 1991, a Eurasian lynx was shot near Norwich in Norfolk. It had killed around 15 sheep within two weeks. The story was only reported in 2003, and the stuffed body of the lynx is allegedly now in the possession of a collector. For many years, this incident was considered to have been a hoax, particularly by the hunting community. But in March 2006, a police report confirmed that the case was true. It was probably an escapee from a facility in the area that bred the animals. In a well-reported 2001 case, a young female Eurasian lynx was captured alive by police and vets in Cricklewood, North London, after a chase across school fields and into a block of flats. It was placed in the London Zoo and given the name Lara, before ultimately being transferred to a zoo in France to breed. The captured lynx was found to be only 18 months old, although was already considerably larger than an average domestic cat. Also, in addition to mere sightings, there have been a number of reports of these mystery cats actually attacking people. In 2000, an 11-year-old boy in Monmouthshire was attacked by what he claims was a large black cat. Josh Hopkins was with his brother searching for their own pet cat near his home in Trelec, when he said the animal attacked him in the long grass. At the start I thought it was playing, but when it struck its paw at me I saw the blood fly past, I thought I was going to die, said Josh. The boy suffered five long claw marks to his left cheek, which needed medical treatment. In 2005, a man who lived near Sydenham Park in South East London was attacked in his back garden, which backed onto a railway line. The man, who was six foot tall and weighed 15 stone, described the cat as being a big black figure that pounced on him and was considerably stronger than he was. He was left with scratches all over his body. Police were called, and according to the BBC, one police officer present saw a cat the size of a Labrador dog. Sightings and encounters such as this continue with incredible frequency to the present day. One of the more recent, and not to mention hilarious, big cat hunts was the intensive search for a supposed lion prowling around the Essex countryside during the summer of 2012. The BBC reported that a search for the very large animal, seen near St Osseth near Clacton-on-Sea, was called off. This was when a local woman named Ginny Murphy said that her ginger Maine Coon cat Teddy, the largest domestic breed, regularly wanders into the field where the animal was spotted. She said that she believes Teddy was mistaken for a lion by holidaymakers. Jill and Steve Atkin of Louth, Lincolnshire, photographed an animal in the field that they claimed was the rogue lion. Mr Atkin told police it was definitely a very large animal, and possibly a lion, definitely some kind of large cat. He added, we witnessed it, I would say, for about 20 to 30 minutes cleaning itself and rolling around in the field. Speaking to the BBC, Mrs Atkins said, The Mirror newspaper has made a bit of a farce out of our report this morning, claiming that the animal we saw was just a domestic cat called Tom or something. But whatever it was, it's definitely still out there. It sounds to me that the couple simply didn't want to admit this howlingly obvious error and decided to blame the newspapers for mangling their story. Essex police have not released any details of the cost of this search, but have said that about 25 officers were called to see what the animal was, including specialist firearms officers and experts from Colchester Zoo. Two police helicopters, one with thermal imaging equipment, were also used to try and detect any trace of an animal. In all, this farce must have cost the county officials a pretty penny. So, what lies behind these sightings? Are they all simply cases of obvious misidentification, confusing large wildcats with domestic tabbies? As odd as this may sound, as humans we are rather poor at judging the size of distant moving targets, especially if we believe we are seeing something unusual or dangerous. It is all too easy for someone to view a feline from a distance and believe that it is in actual fact a much larger animal than it really is especially if said cat is a large breed, such as a Maine Coon, or an exotic-looking Bengal cat. The existence of a population of true big cats in Britain, especially a breeding population, is believed to be highly implausible by experts, 
owing to the lack of convincing evidence. From time to time, as mentioned earlier, cougars and lynx have been captured or shot, suggesting that some of these reported encounters may be with these species. No evidence of cheetahs, lions, leopards and the like has ever been provided, with only poor quality blurry photos offered up as proof. However, some of these do appear to show large, dark coloured or spotted cats, suggesting that the occasional pantherine cat may be stalking the countryside. However, problems do emerge when we consider just how many of the reported encounters involve large black cats, almost always referred to by the public and press as black panthers. It is seemingly not common knowledge that panthers are not a distinctive species. Instead, typical black panthers are actually melanistic leopards and jaguars with their distinctive dark coats produced by the activation of a recessive gene. The sheer number of huge panther sightings simply don't match up with the number of melanistic leopards in captivity in the UK at any one time, let alone animals that have been released into the wild. An interesting explanation for this dates back to older folklore. For many hundreds of years, the myth of the spectral black dog has persisted in Britain a supposed mythical creature appearing as a large black animal in remote moorland with no firm evidence for its existence beyond hearsay. It has been suggested that the stories of black cats are merely a modern continuation of such myths and stories, sharing the same elements but with the idea of a supernatural cause having fallen out of credibility and the more modern, plausible idea of an escaped or released wild cat supplanting it. In addition, the stories of big cats share many traits suitable for the tabloid press, helping to build a widespread urban legend. So are there big cats living wild in Britain? It depends on how you define the term big. The presence of the occasional foreign feline, such as lynxes, cougars, jungle cats and caracals, has been confirmed by hard evidence. All of these animals were one-time escapees and don't appear to have established breeding populations. As for the supposed panthers, lions and leopards, the evidence is far more scant. Some may have been released during the 1970s giving rise to the folk tales surrounding the Beast of Bodmin and Exmoor. However, for the most part, the majority of sightings must simply be cases of mistaken identity, as with the Essex Lion debacle. In an increasingly urbanised world, it is the case that we want to believe that these animals are out there in order to give us a sense that the exotic and dangerous is present in our lives. Big Cat consultant Rick Minter summed up this feeling well. He has gone on record stating, Perhaps our recognition of the cats is as much about the rediscovery of our wild side, the power of our senses when they brush with something elemental. It's possible that the hunt for Britain's big cats may never be resolved. In 1995, the authors of the official investigation into the Beast of Bodmin concluded, It would never be possible to prove that an exotic big cat was not present. Like the protagonist of Schrödinger's famous thought experiment, British big cats inhabit a contradictory state, their existence both imagined and real. Regardless of whether or not they are roaming the wild in any great number, it is intriguing to wonder why so many of us want them to be. Thanks for watching everyone. The recent burst of subscriptions to my channel has helped to cheer me up in these trying times. Again, I am truly grateful for your support. Next week I'll be returning to some more speculative evolution content, so I'll see you again soon. Cheerio and stay safe.